Former WWE champion Pedro Morales passed away this week at the age of 76. Uh, WWE.com had his age listed as 78, uh, but everywhere else I've seen, including ESPN, they have it listed as 76. He had been battling Parkinson's disease for many years. Uh, Puerto Rican native, he was inducted by Savio Vega into the WWE Hall of Fame back in 1995. Uh, that was the year, I think, before they abandoned the Hall of Fame until they finally brought it back in 04. Uh, and Savio also accepted on his behalf. I believe that uh, Morales is the only, you know, at the time was the only living Hall of Fame inductee not to have been present for his own induction. So they had somebody who was among the living, because God knows they've inducted a lot of people who have passed. But he was alive at the time, and they inducted him, and he didn't show up for his induction. Uh, I believe he may have been doing announcing at the time, Spanish language announcing for WCW. So there may have been a conflict there. I don't think it's that he in, had heat with them or intentionally stiffed them, I don't think. It may have just been some kind of you know, scheduling conflict. Uh, or just the fact that he was working for WCW and couldn't show up at a WWE event. But you rarely, if ever, heard this guy's name mentioned in the last uh, probably two decades, really, on WWE television for all of the nostalgia and all of the, you know, maybe they show clips of him in, in like history videos and stuff, but never focused on him or really mentioned him by name, gave him any sort of attention. Uh, no, not even an interview on dot com. You know, forget television. You know, they've had these where are they now kind of interviews with people. Unless I missed it, I don't remember there being a Pedro Morales interview. Just nothing and i always thought that was very strange uh as popular as he was as champion as long as he was champion for over a thousand days that he was simply never mentioned he is the first man in wwe history to win the triple crown that being the wwe championship the intercontinental championship and he was the first ever two-time uh, intercontinental champion and he also won the tag team title with Bob Backlund. They won the titles at that same uh, Shea Stadium show where Hulk Hogan wrestled Andre the Giant long before their battle at WrestleMania 3. Uh, and I think Hogan even slammed him in the match like it was no big deal, so which is kind of funny when you look years later at what a, what a big deal it was for Hogan to slam Andre. There are still people who think that was the first time that Hogan ever slammed Andre. A young me probably thought the same thing until I started seeing clips of old matches and I said, wait a minute, <laughs> I, feel, I, feel, uh, I feel hoodwinked here. Um, but their run as tag team champions, Morales and Backlund, lasted all of a day. Backlund was already WWF champion at the time. They were forced to uh, vacate the tag team titles. None of this two champion bullshit. Uh, actually, when you think about it, you know, when you really read up on Morales and if you or if you watched him, you know, back in his heyday, realistically, he wasn't a, a triple crown winner. He was a Grand Slam winner. He was the first ever Grand Slam winner in WWE because he also held the old uh, WWWF United States Championship. They used to have a United States title. Uh, the company retired it in the, uh, the mid-70s. So that's even more impressive when you think about it. Four titles, not three. Uh, as far as how he became champion, it's it's kind of interesting. You know, Bruno San Martino was champion for so long. Years and years. Eight years this guy was champion for. He was burned out. He was tired of it. He was hurt. He wanted to go home. He wanted to be with his family. He was done. And so the decision was made, and they begged him to stay. Because Bruno was such a huge draw. In the Northeast, Madison Square Garden, that string of sellouts that he had... Vince Sr. did not want him to leave. Bruno said, I'm done. You got to find somebody else. And so the decision was made. They were going to get the championship on to Pedro Morales. Now, I saw a note in the Observer that he was not their first choice. Uh, they wanted to go with a different Italian name because Bruno had such a, a big following among the Italian fan base, you know, in New York. So they had chosen, originally they had chosen a, a man by the name of Mario Milano to be the successor to Bruno San Martino as the, the WWF champion. And he was very big in Australia. He had been working in Australia at the time, was a big name down there. And they pitched him, and ultimately he decided that he wanted to stay down in Australia. 
And at that point, I think it was Gorilla Monsoon was the one who pushed for Morales, and so they went with Pedro. Vote for Pedro, said uh, Gorilla Monsoon. So before they could get the title on Morales, Bruno had to drop it to a heel, because they were not going to have Bruno drop it to another babyface. So he, he did so. He dropped the championship, one of the most famous matches in, I was going to say WWE history. Realistically, it's one of the most famous matches in wrestling history. Uh, he dropped the title at MSG to Ivan Koloff. And when the referee counted three in that match, there was this stunned silence in the crowd. People could not believe that Bruno had lost the championship. Eight years this guy was champion for. I don't even think they presented Koloff with the title until he got backstage to the dressing room. I guess they were worried about what the fans might do. And it was only a few weeks later in that very same building that Morales pinned Koloff to become the new champion. And he defended against a whole ton of, just a ton of names, Fred Blassie and George Steele, Blackjack Mulligan, Ernie Ladd, uh, Larry the Axe, who passed away recently. And there's another famous match where he wrestled Bruno. It was this rare you know, face-versus-face match. And maybe back then it wasn't so rare. Um, because it was after this, they really didn't do them much. Uh, maybe, maybe for a period of time, they, they did do babyface against babyface, but it, they did Pedro and Bruno, uh, had a match in the showdown at Shea Stadium, the old home of the New York Mets. A lot of misery in that stadium, let me tell you. Oh, a lot, a lot of good days too. Uh, it wasn't always so miserable, but yes, there was a lot of misery in, in that, uh, in that stadium, but they went over an hour. They went to a curfew draw. At Shea Stadium, this uh, show the company did in 1972. Yes, the State Athletic Commission imposed a curfew. It's like they played the role of angry parent and they called the match because they had passed their curfew like like a teenager. So that was a pretty famous match. Uh, Morales sold out Madison Square Garden 21 times in 30 title matches during his run as champion. He held the championship for 1,027 days before dropping it to Stan Stasiak. And uh, Stan Stasiak, although he was champion, he's uh, he is but a footnote in history because he only held the title for nine days before dropping it back to Bruno. It's like uh, the Hogan thing, right? Hogan was champion for all those years. Four years as the champion. And Vince McMahon is ready to anoint a new successor. He wants to push the ultimate warrior to be the guy to replace Hulk Hogan. Hogan even does the job for him at WrestleMania. Now it's Warrior's time, and what happened? Warrior flamed out. He flamed out. What did Vince do? He went back to his tried and true. Got the belt back on Hogan the following year. Like father, like son. So I'm sure they couldn't wait to get Bruno back. They obviously gave him a very nice deal, and they convinced him to come back, and Bruno did. And so they put the championship back on him. You can't find footage, by the way, if you look, because I've tried... You cannot find footage of the title change when Pedro lost the title. You can't find it anywhere because I, supposedly it doesn't exist. If it does, I hope WWE uploads it one day as a hidden gem on the network. Uh, but no one, to my knowledge, has ever actually seen footage of it, so they may not have filmed it. Uh, but Pedro was so like insanely over with the Latin audience back then. And they were so terrified of a possible riot when he lost the championship to Stasiak. The ring announcer, when he made the announcement at the end of the match after Stasiak had won, said, let's hear it for Pedro Morales. That was the big announcement at the end of the match. And then they waited a day to announce the title change in the local newspapers. That's how afraid they were. When, when Kayfabe was still very much alive, uh, Blackjack Mulligan. Well, Blackjack Mel Mulligan almost wasn't alive uh, anymore. He wrestled Pedro. There was a match in the Boston Garden that they had. Uh, this was when Pedro was the champion. And uh, the Boston Globe, actually, I was reading up on this old story. And they did this story in, like, 05. I think they were just revisiting old incidents, sports incidents, or whatever the subject was. But you can look up the article in the Boston Globe talked about this. There was an incident where... Mulligan was on his way to the ring and he was about to climb into the ring for a match against Pedro Morales. And this crazed fan, I guess, jumps the barricade and stabs Mulligan in the thigh with a butcher knife. 
And Bobby Heenan, in his book, he said that they took Mulligan to the hospital. They realized at that point that the fan, I guess, to he'd gone one step further. He wanted to do maximum damage here. And before he stabbed Mulligan, he had dipped the knife in pig fat. And so Mulligan's leg became infected. And that's never a good thing. That, that could have gone so much worse. It took him a while to recover. He did recover. He didn't lose the leg or anything. But think about that. Think about how sick in the brain you've got to be. To stab a person, just anybody with a butcher knife, but to dip it in pig fat before you actually stab them. And it took 100 stitches to, uh, to sew him up. So he had a lot of fans. Um, there's long been a story which has never been corroborated, and it probably never will be. But it's been out there for years, and wrestlers have talked about it, and I know Jim Cornette has talked about it before, uh, that Morales supposedly pawned his world title belt while he was the champion to pay off gambling debts. Uh, he, at the time, had claimed that the title was stolen out of his car. Uh, that's just like Bruno San Martino. There were stories in the newspaper when it happened that Bruno was out to dinner, he was in the city, he was eating, and when he got back to his car, he realized that, I guess, his car had been broken into and his championship had been stolen. Well, Pedro claimed the same thing. He claimed that his title was stolen out of his car. Uh, later on, his belt turned up in a pawn shop, I think in Philly, and some wrestling collector ended up buying it. But when Cornette told the story on his podcast, this is going back, I think, a couple of years now, uh, Pedro allegedly paid... $125 to to pawn his title belt. And there was another wrestler named Pete Sanchez. When he was asked about why Pedro would pawn the belt, why would he do such a thing, uh, Sanchez made the comment that Pedro loved the horses. So he may have had some gambling issues, and uh, it's just an interesting little story to think that the champion, you know, your world champion at the time for one, you know, this big organization, would pawn his title belt because he had to pay off gambling debts. Uh, he was still wrestling with WWE through 87. Uh, he even got an intercontinental title match at one point against the Honky Tonk Man. I think highlights of it aired on Primetime Wrestling. Uh, he did some announcing for WWE, did some announcing for WCW. After that, he retreated back into civilian life. Uh, he made some convention appearances over the years. Uh, he wasn't a total hermit or anything like that. In fact, I... The last photo I've seen of Pedro Morales was uh, from a convention. It was a photo of him, uh, Bruno San Martino, and there was somebody else in the photo. I can't remember who. Like three big wrestling names from that era, all in one photo. And supposedly it was taken in 2012 or 2013. So he was still making sporadic appearances until his health just began to uh, deteriorate. He didn't go out as much. But... A uh, forgotten champion in some respects. That's why I wanted to spend a few minutes talking about the guy. Because WWE sure didn't. I mean, they, they put a graphic up for him this week at the beginning of some of the shows. I think they put a video together, a short video. I don't remember if it aired on any of the shows this week. I know it's on their YouTube channel. But, you know, they did the bare minimum that you would expect. But boy, I mean, you talk about a guy with, with a place in history like he had. And the lack of attention and, and respect paid to him over the years, it's, uh, it's almost bewildering. And I think what hurt him probably in some respects, I don't think being sandwiched between two Bruno San Martino title runs did him any favors. I mean, think of the shoes this guy had to fill. And he boy, he had his fans, don't get me wrong. He, he, he did very good for himself. But that would be like Michael Cole coming after Jim Ross and trying to you know, become the new play-by-play -play guy and replacing probably the best play-by-play -play announcer in history. It's almost unfair. And he had to come after Bruno and fill those sho shoes, and that was, you know, I'm sure not an easy thing to do. And so people talk about Bruno and, you know, maybe some of these other people uh, don't get as much attention paid to them uh, because they're just sort of lost in the mix there and that might have hurt him a little bit too but uh, I wanted to make sure that uh, we covered him appropriately here on the show and now everybody can go off and uh, check out some of his work because I'm sure you could find a bunch of Pedro matches on uh, on YouTube you could find you could find pretty much everything on YouTube except you will not find the night that he lost the championship I, I challenge anybody to find that footage because I don't think it exists <laughs> 